Hi everyone, the Lone Wolf here. Welcome back to some EVE Online. Welcome back also to Jita for another discussion video. Um, today's discussion was partly inspired by a discussion I had with another player. Uh, uh, he or she is called Tylea in game. Um, and uh, we had a conversation about the new skin system. And well, I thought it was pretty interesting. Uh, the idea that was put forward there was that the skins should maybe not only come from uh, the New Eden store, so from Aurum and microtransactions, but perhaps they could also be used as a sort of a reward for stuff like achievements or uh, very long quest lines, things like that. So basically tie the, tying the, the skin system in with a sort of an achievement system. Let's say that you kill 10,000 Serpentis, they are the bane of the Galente, you'd get something like a Galente... Um, a Galente militia type skin or maybe a Galente pirate hunter skin or something pretty unique for actually going out there and killing 10,000 Serpentis pirates. Um, the, the idea behind it is also a little bit to encourage people to go and explore different parts of the universe. If, if you can have an achievement for 10,000 Serpentis, you can have the same for Angel Cartel, you can have the same for Sleepers, you can have the same for killing rats in Nolsec space, Sansha, all of that stuff. Could, it could encourage people to try the game in different parts of space and, and have them moving around a little bit instead of just finding the uh, top 5 stations with uh, most and the best mission agents and then just staying there for doing their level 4 missions. Um, yeah, an achievement system where you could possibly reward players with skins. Um, I think it's an interesting idea. I actually don't see it happening anytime soon. This comes completely out of left field. Um, and uh, I don't think it's in any of the plans of CCP, but personally, I, I don't mind it. Uh, I know that there are actually a lot of gamers out there that are completionists that actually get hooked to a game because of an achievement system. And that is something that uh, EVE Online doesn't have at all, while a lot of other games actually do have that. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you think uh, about something like an achievement system in EVE Online and then possibly rewarding players with unique skins to show off that, well, they went through the grind of killing 10,000 rats of a certain type and things like that. Um, I think it could be interesting. But let's also move on now to the, the meat of the matter in this video. Let's talk about the new tactical destroyer that's coming in the Tiamat release, the next one. So we'll go to the community site where we actually have a dev blog available. The Republic Strikes Back, the Zvipul tactical destroyer and projectile changes in Tiamat. So I'm going to pronounce it Zvipul and there's a sound cloud somewhere of a correct pronunciation. But that's just how I read it being uh, Dutch and uh, that's how I'm going to uh, yeah, to pronounce the ship, the Zvipul. So um, it is going to be vertical, pretty cool. Um, but in speed mode you've got a horizontal ship and then in sniper mode and in defensive mode you actually have the front part of the ship um, changing its axis completely going under the ship and then you have a vertical sniper mode and a vertical defensive mode now we we only have this one screenshot here um, so can't really see a lot of detail on uh, the Zvipul uh, from this I can't wait to see it on CC just to check out all the aesthetics and how the transformation actually takes place it is definitely going to be uh, the, the most profound change in a ship uh, when when it uh, changes mode. Uh, I can imagine it will also have some nice animations when it goes into warp. So yeah, this is, this is a little bit of an experiment, I think, also from CCP to see how players respond to larger transformations of ships. Um, I don't mind, just I would say look out for the transformer effect. Uh, I'm not looking to... Um, to end up in, in, in a Gundam or anything like that uh, at the end of the day. So, yeah, I, I, I do think that for this ship it's quite alright. I mean, the Minmetar, they tend to uh, keep their ships together with duct tape anyways. So this does sound like something that they would do. Uh, but um, I also don't want them to go too much into extreme. Um, EVE Online is a sci-fi game, but I do think the player base does like some... Uh, consistency some normalcy as well when it comes to their ship don't go too crazy there either uh, when it comes to the stats of this Vipul it's decently interesting I think 10% um, bonus to small projectile turret damage 10% bonus to small projectile turret optimal range from the Minmatar tactical destroyer skill which will be a new skill coming in Tiamat as well 
Um, but here in defense bonus, I think something pretty unique. 33% uh, bonus to shield and armor resistances. So that's that's interesting. You can ch really choose if you want to go for a shield tank or uh, for an armor tank. Uh, if you decide to go into the defensive mode, uh, you also get a 66% reduction in micro op drive signature radius penalty. So still some mobility with a defensive mode. It's definitely something that Minmatar has this big versatility. You, uh, you, th you would uh, think that defense mode means a tank, so a bit more stationary. But no, they can still choose uh, shield tank, armor tank, still get some speed on there with the nice micro warp drive bonus. I sort of like this. Um, the propulsion bonus, pretty straightforward, 66% to max velocity, 33% to ship inertia. So that is possibly uh, something good, but I actually don't think... Uh, although I did read that it's going to be the fastest tactical destroyer. So yeah, look out, don't underestimate this with auto cannons. That could actually be pretty devastating against frigates. But what I like the most, what I think is more interesting, is the sharpshooter mode. 33% to small projectile turret tracking and 100% bonus to sensor strength, scan resolution and targeting range. I, I have to see the numbers on this but I actually think you can get a pretty crazy range from that destroyer with the uh, small artilleries on this and I actually think that that could be very interesting, something quite unique. Um, you could have these ships uh, bounce around the battlefield very quickly, uh, taking pot shots at quite a long range where they're actually decently safe uh, for doing so. So even in uh, solo and, and in small gangs, I can actually see a use for this, this sniper mode uh, with very long ranges with artilleries. And um, to help out a little bit as well, CCP is also going to rebalance uh, the uh, small artilleries a little bit. So in Tiamat we are making some adjustments to small artillery weapons to help keep them in line with other similar weapon systems. We'll be increasing damage multiplier slightly while reducing tracking speed. So plus 10% for all small artilleries. Not bad. Minus 3% tracking speed. Still that bonus in uh, sniper mode. Or in sharpshooter mode should really help with that 33% increase once again um, and the aim is actually to reduce the dependency on the barrage um, munitions for the artilleries which are really a must-have uh, so all auto cannons will receive plus 7.5% uh, 7 fall off barrage ammo will provide a plus 30% fall off instead of plus 50% so yeah very interesting plans I actually like some of the potential on the ship uh, its versatility I do think is still going to be one of its main assets um, and uh, its looks I'm, I'm really curious to see what this is going to bring uh, when when it hits CC, I think it could be really cool. Um, I don't think that Minmatar look as cool as a Marships. That's just my personal preference. But yeah, I'm totally looking forward to checking out this people for you guys. So yeah, there you go, guys. Let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.